Now we have talked about the components of lambda, the cost of lambda. It's time to write our first lambda function and it's going to be a simple hello world function. The first thing that I'll do is under services I'll search for lambda. Mine is right here but this is because I recently visited lambda. But if you type in lambda over here, you're probably taken to this window, which is the lambda dashboard. And right here, there's a create function button. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm taken to this page where I get to choose from one of three options. I'm going to start with the first box, the option author from scratch. It tells us right here start with a simple hello world example and that's what we want but before we do that let's quickly look at the other two options the blueprints options is pre-configured template that you can use to build an application so there are some code written by AWS that you can use to do things like process logs and change the configuration settings automatically, book a trip with a chatbot, create an Alexa skill and so on. We'll come back to this later but for now let's quickly look at the third option which is the serverless application repository. Now this option lets you find and deploy serverless apps published by developers, companies, and partners on AWS. So anyone can contribute to the serverless application repository. This is a relatively new feature. Compared to the blueprints, while blueprints just gives you Lambda code in a certain language, the application repository gives you the whole application with API gateway, DynamoDB tables, and sometimes even HTML files for your web application. So I encourage you to play around with the other two options but for now we are going to choose the author from scratch option. So I'm going to start with the name of my function I'm going to call it my first function. For the runtime this is the language and not just language but also different versions of the same language. In our case we are working with Python, so let's select Python 3.6. For the role, I'm going to choose create a custom role option. It will take me to another window and it will populate some of the things here already. And if you click on the view policy document, then you can see you're getting permissions of logs, create log group, create log stream and put log events. So basically this is logs stands for CloudWatch. So um, it's letting you do three specific things on AWS CloudWatch. And for that you need a permission. That's what we're doing here. I'll click on the allow button and then create function. Congratulations, your Lambda function has been successfully created. You should see a message like this and if you scroll down a little then you'll see this designer box and you see something called triggers. We talked about triggers a little bit before but basically trigger is the event source right? Um, that will invoke your Lambda function. So it could be one of these services, a lot of services to choose from. For now we don't need any triggers but if you look on the right side it will tell you right here resources the functions role has access to will be shown here. So if you remember from the last window when we created the role, the logs was for M Amazon CloudWatch API calls. So whatever permissions you add to the role that you attach to, to this Lambda function, those services will be shown over here. And we'll be exploring more about adding more permissions to your Lambda role uh, in later videos. But for now, let's move down and you see there is an IDE like window right here. This is the Cloud9 IDE that was released recently. Looks just like a 
normal IDE and you see a function right here it's called lambda underscore handler and if you look at this name and look at the handler name right here in this box if I click on the info button right here the file name dot handler method value in your function so whatever in this box the second part after the dot should match the name of the function right here and the first part of this box should match the name of the file in our case the name of the file currently is lambda underscore function so if I were to change the name of the function from lambda handler to lambda test then I would change this to from lambda handler to lambda test and at this point if you scroll a bit lower you see environment variables this is the environment variables that you set as key value pairs that are accessible from your function code you can add tags and you can also change the roles from here and this is where you can choose the memory of your lambda function when you choose the memory your function proportionally also allocates CPU choose 128 if I take it all the way up to 3000 megabytes it's using more CPU for a lot of the things the 128 MB will just work fine especially in this hello world example the timeout is how long will the function run before it's terminated by itself so if you're trying to do something that requires more time to execute then you probably want to increase this this time from 3 seconds to 10 seconds or 15 or even up to 5 minutes that's the maximum time for now I'm gonna leave it as something like 7 seconds now these are the advanced feature but you can do things like put your lambda function inside of a VPC and you can also do things like configure a dead letter queue so that when your lambda function fails for a certain number of times you can send the payload that were not processed to a dead letter queue for each AWS account you get thousand concurrent lambda function execution across all the functions that you have so if I create this function I create 10 other functions there can only be thousand concurrent executions at a time now what you can do is you can reserve concurrency at a per function basis so that one function does not take all that thousand executions and you can do a lot more things with the concurrency feature if you want to find out more then I encourage you to check out this blog it's called managing AWS lambda function concurrency and has a very good example with a slice of magical pizza and gives you more detail about the concurrency I'll include this link in the description but you can also type in understanding concurrency in lambda blog and you should see this blog on your search so let's go back to the lambda function and right here all the way on the top you can see monitoring tab now this is an important tab because this is where we can go to check our CloudWatch metrics and also look at the logs right from the lambda function for now I'm not gonna go deeper into this so let's move back to the configuration scroll down let's quickly look at the code and see what's happening so there is a function called lambda test which we changed from lambda underscore handler now the event stands for the event source so whatever is being sent by the event source it's being accepted by this function the context object helps the lambda function access things like the runtime information time left before the function is terminated and things like that so these things are in every single lambda function now the second line is just a comment I can remove this and the third line is a return of this function so whenever this function is executed I'll get a return because that's all the function is doing so if I click on save one more time we're gonna invoke this function manually and 
to do that, I'll click on the test option. So the test feature is very useful when you're doing testing and you don't have the actual event to test the Lambda function with. So you can create your own event and there are some event templates. So for example, if I choose the S3 put event template, this is the event object that I will get from the event source. So I'll get things like the event time, the source IP, the size of the files, the bucket name, and all that. So for now, I'm just gonna stick with the hello world example. I have to give the event a name. I'm gonna say my hello test or something like this. What's in here does not really matter, but what I can, what you can do is you can put whatever values that you like. I'm gonna say name and I'm gonna put in my name in here and I'm gonna click on create. Once I have that, I can use the test feature to test this function. So once I set up the test function, let me refresh the page really quick. And after I set up the test function, the event that I just created will be right here. The test event will be right here. I'm gonna click on test to invoke this function. So the Lambda function has been invoked. So when I click on test, the Lambda function is invoked, right? And when I see a check mark like this, then everything worked out good. If I click on details, then I can see the return statement, which is hello from Lambda. And I can see things like the duration of the function, the maximum memory used, the build duration, and all those things. So now what I want to do is I want to add a print statement. Print. I want to print this line. And to make the print statement work in Python 3, I have to include this line from future import print function. And that's only to make the print function work. Once I have this, I'm gonna save the code. I'm gonna click on test and scroll down a little. Now this time you get the response of hello from Lambda, which is the return statement. And you can also see on the function log section right here, start everything that we saw earlier, but this time I have, I want to print this line. It's on the logs because I printed this. I want to print this line. And if you scroll up in this window, you see the same thing. I want to print this line. Now we see this because we're in the console right now, but what if you're away when your Lambda function is being executed and you wanna see the logs? You can do that by a couple of ways. One of them is clicking on logs right here. I'm gonna right click on this. It's gonna take me to the CloudWatch logs page. Now it will create a log group and stream for your Lambda function because of the execution role we provided. We provided it CloudWatch access on the role. That's why this is possible. If you don't have CloudWatch access, then this won't be possible. But if I click on any of my log streams, let's say the first one, and I see the same logs that I saw in this window, this box over here. So the other option is if you scroll down and right now we're in the configuration tab, if you click on the monitoring tab, you can look at the metrics of how many invocations. I have six so far. The duration, if I click on jump to logs, it's gonna take me to another window and it'll show me all the streams, right? It's all the streams. If I click on this, then I can see the individual logs for each execution and I'm gonna click on the top one, the latest one, and I see the same thing as earlier. And with that, we have created our first Lambda function and this is just the basic idea. You can do a lot more with this knowledge and that's what we'll be doing in the next lesson. See you in the next lesson.